Hi, my name is Zarina, and this is my partner Irene. And our project is about the Solar Products Water Reclamation Center. So we, for our project, we decided to make a video to show the importance of the center and what it can do for our community. So. So Colleen, how does this facility run? Well, Karina, that's a good question. How about if we go on a tour? Welcome to the Barrier Solar Aquatics Water Reclamation Center. Wastewater or sewage for this system is collected in a gravity flow collection system that flows down across the highway to the bottom end. After the wastewater flows into a large lift station behind the bottle depot, it is fed through a muffin monster auger that takes out any grit, plastics or other material that is then bagged and goes to the landfill. It is aerated and then pumped up to the big round surge blending tank on the north side of the Solar Aquatics Water Reclamation Center where it is aerated again. The aeration keeps the wastewater aerobic so that it doesn't smell like rotten eggs. Next it comes into the greenhouse and starts to make its way through two trains of big round 10 foot high solar tanks. Here aeration is continued and the plants are introduced. The roots of the plants growing in the wastewater provide a place for good bacteria to live while they're working on cleaning the water. The plants also help by absorbing the nutrients in the water. Some such as common cattails pull heavy metals and pharmaceuticals from the water. We are trying to introduce the best plants for two reasons. One, to clean the water, and two, to sell them to the public for their personal ponds, thereby creating a revenue stream to help offset the costs of operating the facility. After the tour, we had more questions, which Colleen was happy to answer. So this project began back in 2011. What was your reaction to being a part of this project? I was really excited to be part of this project. It's an innovation project, which means that you know, you're doing things that other people haven't done before, so you don't really have a model to follow or anything. And it's a challenge. When you take on an innovation project, you're going to make mistakes, right? And so it was, um, I was pretty excited to be part of the challenge. Barry received a generous round of $6.7 million for this project. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it certainly is a lot of money. And um, just to let everybody know that the $6.7 million was for four different parts of this project. So this is the wastewater water reclamation center is only one part of that and that's about $2.4 mm -hmm. And so the rest of the money was spent on a septage receiving station, which is, I don't know whether you remember or not, but uh, a few years ago the landfill sites mm -hmm. used to take all of the septage to the landfill sites from everyone's septic systems. Mm -hmm. Well, that's been closed down for environmental reasons, and so this new facility has been built as part of this project. Also, the collection system, which is all, which are all the pipes and everything that lead down to the bottom of the system, that was oh, over four million in itself. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's where a lot of the money has been spent. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe um, there's also a rapid infiltration basins that we send the water to on Airfield Road and that was $440,000. How is this project beneficial to the community? Well, it's beneficial in a number of ways. Other than the tourism aspect we were already talking about and the agri-entrepreneurs, there's also the uh, fact that it's going to help with the downtown revitalization. So uh, what I mean by that is that right now, all of the lots in the downtown are quite small and they're connected, they all have their own private septic systems. So. A lot of them are really old and some of them are failing and so all of this wastewater is just going straight down into the ground and guess what's under that? Our aquifer, our water wow. aquifer that uh, provides water into our deep wells and in turn we have to treat that and that's what we drink. So this is a real environmental solution for that because when we collect that water we actually treat it to a higher standard before we put it into the ground. So. Um, so that's really the main reason why um, why the project is beneficial to our community. So why are you using chlorine in the water? 
uh, chlorine is a you know, lost safety in the whole plant, so we use that to you know kill any biological that does get through, and also make sure we don't get any regrowth in the lines. Oh. Okay. So, uh, how did you feel about working on this project? Well, it's been uh, really interesting. It's uh, yeah, it's uh, state of the art. It's going to be very innovative, and uh, yeah, it's been a real you know, pleasure working on it. Yeah. So, what plants do you have currently growing in the tanks right now? Well, currently, currently we only have about uh, four or five different varieties, mm -hmm. and they've been given to us just to try out. We started with water lettuce, which is not the kind of water lettuce that you eat. It's not the kind that you want to sell to anyone because it's growing in a wastewater tank. Uh, we have water iris, we have water hyacinth, we have water mint, and again, you won't want, we won't be eating that. Um, we have some, a lot of duckweed, mm -hmm. which is, it's good. I mean, it covers the surface of the tank so that um, you don't get the solar action creating algae in the tank. So that's good. And we have cattails and a couple of uh, pond lilies at this point. Are you going to grow edible plants anytime soon? Well, definitely not in the wastewater tanks. So for obvious reasons, we're not going to be growing edible plants mm -hmm. in the solar tanks. But we are hoping that some of our agri entrepreneurs will take on that, that job. And because of our limited space, although 1,500 square feet sounds like a lot of space, it's really not when you're talking about growing lettuce and tomatoes and things like that. However, if someone grew them vertically or came up with other concept on how to grow them, there might be a, an opportunity to sell them locally. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we're focusing on are unique products. So products that are maybe not grown anywhere else in Canada. Maybe they're always already shipped in from, from other places, in the, especially in the wintertime. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. 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 Um, and don't forget, if you have any more questions or if anybody else has any questions, you can always go to the district website, District of Barrier, so it's barrier.ca mm -hmm. is our address, and, uh, or you can email me, and I'm chanigan at barrier.ca, but you can find that on the website as well. Okay.